everyone welcome back to prep talk podcast in today's podcast we have one of tutela's stars who scored 1560 on his second attempt in sat sudharth roy has been with tutela for more than a year and has taken two attempts where he scored 1450 and took a jump of 110 marks by scoring 1560 in his final attempt so without further ado let's welcome him on the podcast and understand from him how his journey has been so far hello sudharth welcome to the podcast thank you for having me It's great to have you here. So let's start with the first question. Yeah. How did you know that SAT is the standardized test prep you wanted to go ahead with since we know that there are two tests that are taken into consideration? So quite honestly speaking when I was thinking about you know the SAT I was 10th grade in the middle and at that point ACT wasn't very well known about mm-hmm. when I was thinking about it so I didn't really consider ACT until I gave the full diagnostic. Mm-hmm. and only then did i get an actual idea okay the ncert is also a viable option but mm-hmm. you know according to the diagnostic i was asked to give the sat which you know i'm glad i did so how did you think act versus sat diagnostic test plays a vital role in determining the right standard test for you since you've taken it so you have an idea how it actually goes yeah so personally speaking when i gave the diagnostic test a lot of the syllabus was completely new to me i mean 10th grade in the middle of it I had no clue what a graph was and a lot of the standard the practice test was confusing. I didn't know most of the things and I find it just sheer luck that I got a higher score on the SAT uh, test but I think in general the main thing to take away from these is whether you can handle the time pressure in ACT because I find that's the biggest difference from you know friends I've talked to is that the, if you can't handle time pressure if you can't handle that feeling of being in an exam room with that much like stress on you then i think sat is the better option even though certain sections might be slightly harder okay so what difficulties you face while preparing for sat and how did you overcome them so while preparing for my first uh, first test all of my learning was online mm-hmm. so this was during peak covid so at that point you know i thought it was the same you know online learning offline learning i thought mm-hmm. as long as you pay attention you'll be good but what i realized when i gave my first attempt was is that you can't really simulate that test environment online because mm-hmm. i'd gotten so used to giving flts you know in my room in the silence mm-hmm. but when i gave the actual test it was completely night and day and right. i think one of the biggest challenges to overcome for my first attempt was just that shock of the new environment giving a paper in a massive center with so many new people mm-hmm. and also for me it was probably the first exam or test that i'd given that would actually impact let's say my future decisions and goals Okay. So since you spoke about how different situation is when it comes to taking a test at the center and taking it from your home. So what difference that you uh, saw while giving the first attempt and that you incorporated in your second attempt? So one of the main reasons my first attempt didn't go as well as I wanted was the test environment and I think nervousness. Mm-hmm. So during my prep for the second attempt, I made sure that all of my tests were given in person at the center. Mm-hmm. And also any extra tests i would go and sit in let's say a noisy place like a cafe or mm-hmm. just outside in a park and give the tests mm-hmm. just to get acclimated to that distraction and i think that really helped with the actual test giving procedure in the actual mm-hmm. day of the event cuz you're with new people it's a new school it's intimidating sometimes but mm-hmm. you get used to it if you keep giving those tests over and over again but i do think that after point i gave maybe too many tests so maybe i had to dial back a bit yeah okay So uh which according to you was the easiest and most challenging section of SAT? Uh for me I think the easiest would be the last section which is the math with the calculator section. Um I think personally I've always had an affinity for math and the calculator just gives you that a short guarantee that you're cal- that you're going in the right direction but you know one big caveat to that entire fact is it's the last section of the paper and it's a 3 hour long paper so right. it's extremely important to you know keep focus at the end of that paper because a lot of times what would happen to me in my practice tests was last section i'm just in a hurry to get it over with because i'm tired but the day off you really need to just keep your cool and then give that last section as if it's your first so then you can completely focus hardest section i would say is reading mm-hmm. out of all of them coming from an icse english background reading is a completely new game it's extremely different and in icse in the in my schooling system you have to look for deeper meanings and you have to analyze the text but in sat everything you take is extremely face value all your information is given in the text and you need to take it from there so i think a lot of students do struggle with the reading section and getting acclimated to it but i think after you give enough tests you sort of have a pretty good idea about what questions can come while reading the passage itself 
So I think it just comes down to practice and then analyzing. So did you face any test day jitters or anxiety? Uh, for my first attempt, yes, I was extremely nervous. I was extremely scared because uh, one, I was the I was probably the youngest person there, and new school, new environment. Mm-hmm. So I was extremely nervous for my first attempt. Second attempt, I think I tried to make a conscious effort to calm down, keep my cool, and also. I think what helped me was while waiting to be taken to our test rooms I just I started conversation with other people then that kind of helps lighten the mood slightly you're all about to go give that one big test everyone's nervous but you just need to somehow find a way to negate that nervous nervousness so that you can keep your cool during the paper and I think talking to anyone before while you're waiting to go into your room is just helpful at least it was for me good to know so what tips uh, would you like to share with the other students who are currently at this stage so I think it would change based on english and math so i think for math one thing that i would say is keep focused at all times because a lot of times you'll think that you've gotten the correct answer but mm-hmm. it might be something different you might have made a silly error here and there and the answer options are framed in such a way that if you make a small error in calculation or in understanding the question that answer option is given so you will be fooled by that so i think in math it's extremely important to focus go through the questions once again and i personally for me what would work is taking my time per question so even though the no calculator section that's 25 minutes for any questions i found it a lot more helpful to do each question thoroughly recheck it and then move on rather than do everything quickly and then come back so for math section i would say the biggest thing is keep your focus and read the question well okay. for the english section personally english section was always the hardest for me to improve my score with especially reading writing i think it just comes down to practice and analyzing your mistakes a lot and thoroughly but for reading because every passage is different every passage talks about something different you may find it boring you may find it interesting it's extremely subjective i think for reading the biggest thing would be just would be giving a lot of practice tests and not doubting yourself mm-hmm. a lot of times what would happen to me was i would bubble down an answer and then erase it for another answer and then it turns out oh my first answer was correct because I would overanalyze texts but the main the thing with the SAT reading is all your information is at face value in those texts so I would say for me what helped was taking everything at face value and just going with my first instinct my first gut feeling and not overthinking it okay so how was your experience at Kerala so for the first attempt you know it was completely online so I don't think I formed as good as a connection with my teachers and mm-hmm. other students right because you don't get to see them face to face So first attempt there was no problem with learning i mean mm-hmm. all the teachers explained the subjects and the content very well it's just that it's not the same feeling as a classroom and that mm-hmm. was i didn't enjoy that very much but and for my second attempt it was a bit strange cuz i had already done all the learning so now i was coming in for sporadic testing but i think that the in person experience at tutela is a lot better than the online experience because one you get to see your teachers and you can it's a lot easier to ask questions and ask silly questions in person So I think coming into the center for all my practice test sessions was extremely helpful and the general way of explaining content and let's say openness you can have with your teachers here is is great. Right. And you also say you know stu- when you are doing online classes you are just you being there and when you are here at the center you see others facing the same issue so you kind of don't get the anxiety as much. Yeah, during you know during an online class you're wondering if okay my question is going to interrupt the session or if it's mm-hmm. going to take up time and it might be silly question but in an offline scenario yeah you do see okay people also have their own doubts and then i think as if that one person asks that doubt then everyone will slowly keep asking their doubts and that just benefits everyone there so moving to the last question for uh, for this podcast uh, what are your future plans so considering i gave the sat you know i am a us college applicant and okay. i hope to pursue engineering in the future in the us and in regards to let's say any more standardized tests i will be giving three ap exams most probably that's good and but i do think here that um from what i've heard recently from a lot of admissions officers also is that ap's are completely optional and like if you only if you have the time and only if you're not sacrificing on your extracurriculars and your normal marks should you give them so i would suggest that you know really think about it if you have the bandwidth to give the ap Personally I am because also the AP subjects I'm giving those are things I enjoy those are things I'm passionate about yeah. I will be giving that and yeah those are my future plans with Tutela and in general So uh, since you spoke about APs and giving it or not I think uh, 
more than having the bandwidth you also have other benefits such as you know college uh, credits and then you get uh, a list of how the college course would look like for you and then you have financial benefits which are great and i think if you and you started at the right time if we we have students who start right in 11th which is not suggested but then the plans look like that for them so if you start right i think ap's are a beneficial factor if you look at the broader perspective nonetheless you're doing it and that's great yeah. so you know currently what others in my batch are facing is they started their sct or act prep in the 11th grade mm. did their let's say coaching did their learning for about 2 months had to stop because of midterms and then restart it so that kind of pushed their entire schedule behind so you have some people giving their first attempts in december others in february or june mm. which is extremely late because yeah. june is just 2 3 months away from application season mm. so i think yes ap's do have a big advantage but also in in all of these you do have to start early yeah. and i remember when i started sct prep in the 10th grade i was like oh you know i don't think this is going to be very useful but now that with how covid has you know pushed back exams and everything i think it was an extremely wise decision because yeah. now i have the time to actually focus well on my ap's because i'm done with sct okay so with this we end our today's podcast thank you so much sadhat for being a part thank and helping the students Uh, so if you like this podcast don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel and for more content and fun filled information stay tuned have a good day and i shall see you in the next one bye bye